Hello, you wonderful people on YouTube. Have you wanted to try Remix and Strappy together, but just didn't know where to start? Well, today I'm gonna to share with you a project that I've been working on and show you how to set it up so you could give Remix and Strappy a try. Both are awesome frameworks that allow you to build things really quickly. So without any ado, let's jump in and see what we're gonna take a look at. Remix is an amazing full stack framework that allows you to build applications fast. I really love it and it works really cool with Strapi. Yes, I said Strapi, a headless CMS, because you can build a whole full stack application on Remix, but you don't have to. And the way I like to combine my Remix application with is by using Strapi because I wanna build things fast and Strapi allows me to do this. Because Strapi is a headless CMS that allows you to create an API literally in minutes. It's easy to get started. And what's awesome as you grow as a developer or you need to add additional functionality, you could do that in Strapi because it's Node.js based. So if you know JavaScript, you are able to add additional features because it's highly customizable and it's just awesome. Am I a fanboy? Probably. But before we set this project up, let's see what you're actually setting up. You're going to have this beautiful blog post that Trisha, I'll make sure to put her handle in the description, follow her on Twitter. She made this beautiful design. And as you scroll down, you could see our features, you could see our plans, you could see our testimonials. And all of this content is powered by Strapi, including the top navigation, including the footer here, the social links, all of this can be updated from your Strapi homepage. So if I go to my Strapi homepage, which we'll set up in a second, I'll go on the content manager, We'll go under our page collection type and here you could see our page. And as you could see, here's our hero section, here's our features, here's our pricing plans and so on. And what's cool as a programmer, I don't have to update the data. This is the job of the content editor. So if a content editor wanted to change this, Strappy started with Remix.js, maybe they wanted to say, awesome, Strappy started, they could do that, we could save. And when we go back to our application and refresh, look at that awesome strappy starter with Remix.js. That is pretty cool and beautiful. And including our blog here, this is powered by our amazing strappy backend as well. If we take a look under our articles, you could see that we have a bunch more articles that are showing up. And notice how we have premium flag for that says, hey, some of the articles are premium and some are not. So right now we're showing one, two, three are free posts. So here you go. And in order to see the premium content, you have to log in. You're actually able to create an account and register, or I already have a test account for you. You could do test user, test user, and click log in, and boom. Now you see all of our premium content, which gets rendered beautifully in our blog post, which is pretty cool. You could also log out under our homepage. We have this form where people could enter their email to join the community. So you could say monkey at email.com, click submit, and it's gonna go ahead and submit that form. And we could see that on the lead form submissions. If you refresh, you could see that new submitted uh, email for people interested in joining your community. And so that was a quick walkthrough of the application. So now let's take a look how to set it up. We're going to clone it from this repo and I'm going to show you how to set it up today. But you could also use this readme as reference. So you could find it at github paul Bertslavsky slash strappy dash remix dash starter, but I'm sure I'll put a link in the video description. And so to get started, I'm going to click code and I'm going to use GitHub CLI because it makes things easier. And since I already have installed, I'm gonna copy it. And inside my terminal, I'm gonna paste the name, click enter and let it clone the repo. Now that it's done, we have a very easy command that you could run. So first, make sure that you navigate to the folder. So I'm gonna CD into Strappy Remix Starter and I'm going to run Yarn Setup. What this is going to do, it's going to install all the dependency, both for Remix and Strappy. So clicking enter, let it do its thing. And I'll be back in just a minute. Now that we cloned our repo and ran the yarn setup command, let's go ahead inside our backend folder, add our environmental variables. I'm going to open my project in VS Code. Let's navigate to our backend folder and check out the env.example file. We're gonna copy these environmental variables and we're going to, inside the root of our backend folder, create a new file called 
env. Go ahead and paste the variables. You could go ahead and update them accordingly, but this is going to work. Inside my terminal, I'm going to navigate to my backend and I'm going to run yarn build. And if you're on a Mac, you could run this together, yarn develop, click enter. It's going to go ahead and build your Strapi admin panel and start the project. Once the Strapi project starts, you're going to be asked to create your first admin user. Go ahead and do that now. Paul Bratz, paul.bratzlavsky at strapi.com and good password, monkey1234, monkey1234, exclamation point, of course. And now, boom, we're inside our Strapi admin panel we have a fully functional API. If we take a look at our content manager, we have all of our content types, but notice how we don't have any of the data. So now we're going to see the data. Inside our root of the folder, we have our seed-data.tar.js file, and we could import it using our Yarnstrapy import feature, which allows you to import your previously backed up data. So within my terminal, I'm gonna stop the server, clear my screen, and I'm going to run yarn strappy import file flag and because it's in the root of our project we're going to do dot 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 slash c dot data dot tars and make sure that you're running this command from your backend folder this is going to go ahead and say are you sure you want to import this data it's going to delete any previously existed data that is perfectly fine for us we're going to go ahead run the import once it's done let's run yarn develop to restart our strappy project once a Strapi project restarts, you could go ahead and refresh and you're going to see all the content available. You have your articles, our author's information, our categories, our page information, our product feature information. And if you take a look at the global, this has our global settings, which include our navigation and our footer, which is fantastic. So next, looking at our readme file, we want to start setting up our front end. For our front end to function, we do need to set up our environmental variables. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to accomplish this. Inside VS Code, navigate to your front end and you'll see the env example uh, file. Go ahead and copy the code and inside the root of the front end folder, create a new file called .env. We're going to paste the code. And the last thing we need to do is create this token to allow us to submit our submission form and also make sure that we have the right permissions publicly available in our Strapi API to give our Remix application access to get our data. So I'll show you what I mean. So inside our Strapi application, let's go ahead and navigate to settings under roles and go to public. Because we imported this data from backup, these permissions should be already included. If you look under article, you'll see find and find one selected. Looking under author, you'll see the same thing. And so on for categories, our global page, find, and under our page, find and find one, our product feature. So what we're doing here is telling Strapi, here's the endpoints I want to make available to publicly access by our application. And if you take a look and this is not selected, you can go ahead and select all the appropriate items. And if you forget what they are, you could take a look inside our readme file and it's gonna show you all the permissions that we want to select to give us public access. The last thing we want to do is create a submit form token for our lead form submission. So I'm gonna show you how to accomplish that now. Inside of our Strapi application, going back to settings, under API tokens, we're going to create a new token. We're going to say a form. And the reason why we want to create a token is because we only want people who go to our website to be able to register for the form. I'm going to select token duration unlimited. Under select type, we're going to say custom. And for our lead form submission API, we're going to click create. So in order for someone to be able to create a form submission, they would need to provide this API token that we generate, which will be passed through our Remix application. So you won't be able to just go to this endpoint and submit your form. You would actually would have to do it through our Remix application. Let's copy our token, click save. And in our front end project, let's go ahead and add that here. We should be all set now. In our application, in the root, if you take a look at package.json file, 
you will see that we have concurrently set up, which allows you to start your front end and back end all at the same time by running Yarn Dev. So let's give it a try. So I'm gonna stop my server. I'm gonna clear my screen, navigate to the root of your project and run Yarn Dev. This is gonna start our front end and our back end. Navigate to our front end and boom, you could see our amazing website running which is kind of cool. And you could even test out the login feature by using test user and password is test user. When you log in, it's gonna go ahead and show you all of our premium content. Great, we now have our amazing Remix and Strapi application running. So finally, let's take a look quickly how this works. Inside a Strapi application, whenever we make a collection type, or a single type, it will automatically create an endpoint. So let's use articles as an example. If we take a look under settings, under roles, under public, we have our articles endpoint. And if we take a look under find, we could see that if we hit our API slash articles endpoint, we will get our JSON data returned to us. And this is the JSON data we're going to get. If we take a look in our Strapi application under blogs, here we could see our data being represented. So the data that is being rendered by our Remix application is what we're getting from our API endpoint. Let's look in code to see how it works in Remix. Inside our app folder, we have our routes and the route that I just showed you where we see all the cards of all the blog posts is controlled by this blog route. If we take a look, we have our loader function. We are getting our data from our loader and we're passing our data to our blog list component that renders it to the page. And that is the basic pattern in Remix. We use our loader function to get our data and then we pass it to our components. And I think I'm gonna end it here. I could break down the whole application, but what I want to encourage you is go ahead, set it up, play with it, break things, fix things. And if you get stuck, you could always ask questions in the comments below or go to the remix.run website to check out the documentation or visit strappy.io to learn more about these two amazing technologies. But I'm going to continue to make this video showing you all these different ways that you could build cool things together. So if you like the video, smash the like button. If you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. But with that being said, let me know how this project is working out with you. And by the way, before you go, if you wanna help out and you wanna contribute to this open source project, you could go ahead and add additional features. You could do PR requests, or if you find things that I didn't do that well, which I probably didn't, and fix them, those are appreciated as well. But I hope you had fun. Please enjoy this project, share it with everybody else, and I'll see you in the next video.